Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about using variables in C++. Now, a lot of times when we're writing programs in C++, we're gonna be dealing with all different types of data and information. And a lot of times when we're dealing with that data and information, it can be kind of hard to keep track of. And a variable is basically just a container where we can store different pieces of information or different data values in our programs and it makes it a lot easier for us to manage and maintain and use that data. So I'm gonna show you guys an example and we'll, I'll show you guys basically how variables are useful and how we can use them in C++. So down here, I have a very basic program that I've written out. And you'll see down here, I'm basically just printing out a bunch of lines of text. It says, there once was a man named George. He was 70 years old. He liked the name George, but did not like being 70. So this is basically like my little story here. And you'll see I can run my program and this is a valid program in C++. It basically just prints out the story and we have all of our information. So, you know, this is a, a pretty nice C++ program. It, it serves its purposes. But let's say that I'm looking at my story and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I wanna change the character's name, right? So maybe I don't like the name George. Maybe I wanna change it to a different name. So what I could do is I could go through and I could manually change it in each line of code. So I could come here where it says George and I could change it. Let's say we wanna change the character's name to John, right? So I can change it to John. I'll keep looking through the story. Down here it also says George, so I'll change it to John. And there we go, we've changed uh, the character's name. We've officially updated it. Let's say maybe now I'm thinking to myself, I think I wanna make the character a little bit younger. Instead of 70, why don't we make John 35? So I can do the same thing. I can go in and manually change the value of 70 to 35. So we can come over here and we can say he was 70, we'll change this to 35. And we'll say did not like being 70. Okay, so we'll change that to 35 as well. So now we've officially updated our story. We've changed the character's name and we've changed the character's age. Here's the problem though. In order to make those changes, I had to manually go through and individually edit each one of the places where the character's name showed up or the character's age showed up. And imagine that instead of having a story that was only four lines long, I had a story that was like hundreds of lines. And we mentioned the character's name hundreds of times and we mentioned their age hundreds of times. Well, all of a sudden it becomes a lot more difficult for me to manage those pieces of information. So it's difficult for me to manage the character's name and the character's age. Right, if I had a story that was hundreds of lines long and we mentioned the character's name a hundred times, having to you know go and modify and update that name would be a very tedious task because I'd have to go through and essentially just do it manually. And this is where something like variables come in. A lot of times in our programs, we're gonna have different pieces of information, different data values that we wanna keep track of and we wanna be able to manage. So what we can do is we can take those pieces of information and we can put them inside of containers called variables. And a variable, like I said, it's just a container where we can store a piece of data and it'll make it a lot easier for us to use and manage that piece of data in our programs. So I'm gonna show you guys how we could create a variable that could store the character's name and the character's age. And you'll see why this can be useful in something like this. So over here, I'm gonna create a couple of variables. When we create a variable in C++, we actually have to tell C++ a couple things. The first thing we have to tell C++ is what type of information we wanna store inside of the variable. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys all about the different types of data that we can use in C++. But for now, I'm just gonna show you guys two types of data. The first type of data that we can store inside of a variable is called a string. And that basically means it's a string of characters. So it's like plain text. So this down here where it's saying there once was a man named John, this is a string, right? It's plain text in our program. A lot of times we're gonna be dealing with strings. So I'm gonna create a string variable. In other words, I'm gonna create a container that can store a string value. So I'm just gonna say string. And that's the first thing that we have to tell C++. The next thing we have to do is give this container, give this variable a name. So what we wanna do is give this a descriptive name, which will basically tell us what is inside of the variable. So I'm just gonna call this character name, just like that. And what I can do now is I can give this a value. So I could say character name is equal to, and now we can type in the character's name. So I could say John, just like that. 
All right, so once we've created this character name value variable, now this value, John, this string value is now stored inside of this character name variable. The next thing we're gonna do is create another variable to store the character's age. In addition to storing data in the form of a string, we can also store numbers. Now age is a whole number. So what I can do is I can store it inside of something called an integer. And an integer is basically just a whole number. So I could just say int and I can just call this character age. Now I wanna show you guys another thing that we can do. So up here, what we did is we said string character name and we set it equal to a value right away. But what I could also do is put a semicolon here. And also I do wanna point out, um, whenever we're writing lines of code in C++, every time you finish writing a line of code, you wanna put in this semicolon. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the last video, but the semicolon basically tells C that we're done with that line of code. So this separates one line of code from another. So you need to always make sure you put these semicolons. But with a variable, what I could do is I could say int character name. I could do the same thing for string. And then I could go on to a new line and I could give this a value. So I could say like character age is equal to, and now I'm just gonna type in a number. So we said that John was gonna be equal to 35. And you'll notice when we use numbers, we don't have to surround these with quotation marks. We just can type out the number. So now we have two variables and I showed you two different ways that we can create them. And what we can do is we can use these variables inside of our story and you'll see how this makes it a lot easier for us to maintain this program. So what we wanna do is we wanna replace every instance of the character's name and the character's age with the variable. So instead of just printing out John here, I wanna to refer to this variable. And the way that we need to do that is we basically need to include this variable. So over here, I'm printing out this string of text. I'm printing out a bunch of plain text, right? But let's say instead of just printing out John here as plain text, I wanted to instead print out the value that was stored inside of the character name variable. What I can do is I can just get rid of John and I can say less than sign, less than sign. And what this is basically gonna tell C++ is that we want to take the value that we're gonna type out here. So I'm just gonna type out character name. And it's basically telling C++ that we wanna take this value and we want to insert it right here inside of this line of text. So when I go ahead and run my program now, you'll see that we're still printing out there once was a man named John except now I didn't actually type out John. All I did was include this variable right here. And I basically just said that we wanna put the variable right in there. So that's how we can include a variable inside of one of these print statements. So over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna say less than less than character name. And now this is gonna insert the character name. In other words, it's gonna insert the value stored inside of the character name variable at this position. We can do the same for the age. So over here we have the character's age. I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna say less than, less than, and now character age. And so the value inside of the character age variable is gonna get placed right in there. And we have one more place where we have the character's age. So over here, I'm gonna get rid of this. And now this is gonna be special. So you'll see over here, we want to insert the value inside of the character age variable right in between all of this text. So I wanna put it right here. What I can do is I can make two quotation marks. And essentially what this is doing is it's saying, this is gonna be its own string of text and this is gonna be its own string of text. And I can make two less than signs. I can type out the character age variable and then I'm gonna make two more less than signs. And this is essentially just gonna string all of these together. So it's gonna say, print out this text, then print out the value inside of the character age variable, then print out this text. So I've now replaced every instance of the character's age and every instance of the character's name with those variables. Let's run our program and see what happens. Over here, you'll see we have the same exact story as we did before. There once was a man named John, he was 35 years old, John 35. So without having to manually do anything, we were able to include those values. And now what's cool about variables is if I wanted to update the character's name or update the character's age, 
all I have to do is change it up here in one spot. So if I wanted to change the character's name to Tom, and I wanted to make Tom, let's say, 50 years old, I only have to modify the values that are getting stored in the variables, and they'll automatically update down in our story. So now when I run my program, you'll see it's using the name Tom, and it's saying that he's 50 years old. So that's kind of an awesome way that we can use these variables. Another cool thing that these variables allow us to do is modify the values. So let's say that halfway through our story, I wanted to change the character's name. Right, so halfway through, I wanted to make the name be a different name. All I have to do is say character name, and I can actually assign this a different value. So I could give this the value of Mike. And again, I'm gonna need a semicolon here at the end of this line of code. And now you'll see halfway through the story, the character's name is gonna change. So it says there once was a man named Tom, and down here it's using the name Mike. So not only was I able to just use those variables to insert these values, but I can actually modify those variables at different places in my program. So that's pretty awesome. Now, this is just sort of like the bare basics of variables. Variables are containers. They allow us to maintain and keep track of the data and the values in our programs a lot better. And they also give us the advantage of only having to assign a value once. So I can assign a value once up here, and then I can use it and refer to it in different places down here. I can also modify those values at different places in my programs. So in this tutorial, we talked about storing values as strings of text and as integers, which are whole numbers. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys all of the different types of information and the different types of variables that we can create in our programs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.